So today we're continuing our discussion on the confidence interval for one population mean. We've looked at the generic formula, we looked at this new distribution that we're using, the t-distribution. Now we are going to talk about the steps for calculating a confidence interval. So just a few reminders. First, remember that a confidence interval is a form of statistical inference, so we're going to have to use a sample to make an inference on a population. Specifically here, we're going to use sample information to calculate an interval we hope mu is contained within. So with this confidence interval, you'll notice that the steps are actually similar to what we've seen in chapters past. So the very first thing that we need to do is state the population in the sample. So the reason that you do that, state the population, is because you want to talk about who or what you're going to try to make an inference on. So that whole group or that large group that you're interested in. And then the sample is the group that's going to help you make that inference. So again, remember statistical inference, we have a population we're trying to make an inference on, and then we use a sample or a small group to actually uh, make that inference. Then the second step will be to state the assumptions about the sampling distribution. So if you remember, we now are using the sampling distribution of X bar. And we learned some information about that sampling distribution that will help us to make these inferences. So that information that we learned is that we're going to have to assume that the sampling distribution of X bar has a normal distribution. So similar to what we learned in chapter two, but now because our new sample estimate or our statistic is X bar, our sampling distribution that we're talking about is X bar. The third thing that we have to do is essentially verify that that assumption that the sampling distribution of X bar is normal, we have to verify that. So we do that through what's called checking conditions. Now this is a more complicated process than what we saw in chapter two. So essentially it would be wonderful if we could assume that the original population is normal. But because we're making an inference, we don't have information on the population, and so it's hard for us to make that assumption. And so we're going to have to check conditions using sample size. Now, the challenge with this particular area in statistics is that it's not a universal trend. So not everybody uses the exact same way to check conditions. And the textbook actually goes into a lot of great detail in terms of how big of a sample size you would need. And you'll notice that it's always connected to outliers. So outliers are bad, and if they're included in your data, they're really going to affect your ability to assume that the original population has that normal distribution. So we want big sample sizes, and we don't want outliers. And we'll use different conditions based on if there are outliers or if there are extreme outliers and how big the sample size is. So again, the purpose of that step three is for you to be able to essentially verify that the assumptions from step two are true. So then we'll go through the process of actually calculating the interval. So if you remember our formula for a confidence interval is going to use X bar plus or minus, uh, essentially it's a margin of error where a margin of error is calculated by taking T star whoop, times standard error. So we are going to find a confidence interval that hopefully will contain mu. And to go through that process for calculating the confidence interval, we need X bar. We need the T star multiplier, which is part of that margin of error calculation. And the last part of that margin of error calculation will be standard error. So after we find that, we'll calculate margin of error, and then we'll add and subtract to get a lower bound and an upper bound. That will be our confidence interval for mu. After we create that confidence interval, then we'll interpret it and make an inference on our population parameter, which is going to be mu.